So you've got your practice plan all worked out. And that works great on the days when the stars align and everything just runs smoothly. But how do you cope with those frequent occasions when life just throws a whole bunch of things at you that mess up your best laid plans? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you plenty of tips that will help you to have a productive practice session, even on those days when conditions are really difficult. And it is this consistency in the face of challenges that is the key to making a really big leap forward with your music. And I should also say that everything we're going to go over here, it's all a good habits to have in your practice, even on those good days. It's just that on the good days, you can get away with doing things differently. But on the bad days, these things are really vital. And we're going to cover three common reasons why your practice might be difficult. It's not having enough time for your usual practice, really lacking in motivation, and just those times when things just all seem to go wrong in practice. And I'd really love to know which of those you struggle with the most. Just let me know by writing in the comments below, either time, motivation or wrong. And there are quite a few different tips here, so I'm not planning to go into huge detail on any of them. They, they should be pretty straightforward to work out. But what I suggest you do is experiment with different ones and just find out which of them are the most helpful for you. And let's start with what happens when you're just really struggling for time. And that could be just a busy day when there's lots of little jobs to be done. It could be some big event that totally changes your normal schedule and just takes up the whole day. And in the impact it has on your practice, it could be you literally think there's just no time in the day. I've got no time to fit any practice in. Or it might just be that there are blocks of time, but you have a normal regular practice time and that is no longer possible. It's covered by something else. Whatever it is, this can be a really good excuse for us just not to do things. And I don't want you to fall into that trap. And the first thing to really remember here is that keeping up a regular practice routine is still a win, you know, no matter what the practice session is like. Keeping up a regular habit where you practice every day or whatever your normal frequency is, is something to celebrate. And the other thing to remember about it is that this is going to make things easier, even on those good days when you have got time when you know that you're on a roll and you've kept up this momentum of practicing every day on those good days that's going to make it that much easier to really make use of them so even if you didn't get a huge amount out of doing your practice on these difficult days keeping up that routine is still a win but as we'll see you can still get plenty out of it even if it feels at the start like you might not be able to and the second thing here is to remember that it's really quality of practice that is much more important than quantity. So don't get into thinking that, oh, because I've only got five or 10 minutes, it's not gonna do me anything good. There is plenty that you can do in a short amount of time, as long as you're focused and you really give it that quality attention and make, it, make those few minutes that you are actually practicing really count. And when you're practicing this way, don't feel that you have to rush through everything that you would normally like to work on. You're going to get much better results from doing one or maybe two things really well and spending a decent, if very small amount of time on them, rather than trying to cram everything you would normally fit in a longer practice session into a shorter one and just breezing through it and hardly scratching the surface of anything. So that's one aspect of it. The second is break things down even those particular sections that you're working on into small chunks in terms of time. So what is the smallest amount that I could work on a scale, for example, and still get something out of it? And if you look at it, if I really play it with focus, if I really play it with attention, I could just take one scale and play up and down way less than a minute and still get something out of that. So what you're thinking here is, what can I actually do in just a couple of minutes that still gives a definite result at the end? If there's something that you can say yes to that, and there pretty much always is, then that is valuable practice, even if it's only a minute or two. And now let's talk a bit about motivation. 
what do you do on those times when you're just totally lacking in motivation to practice? And I don't know about you, but I often feel like getting down to practice is one of the last things I want to do on a particular day. But in my experience, the real key here is to get started. If you get started, then often you'll find that motivation will come. So what we're mostly going to talk about here is tips that will get you starting your practice. And remember again what we've just said about this keeping that momentum going, keeping that regular practice going every day or whatever frequency you're doing is a valuable thing in itself. So having some way that means you get started every day is going to pay huge dividends in the long run. And the first way to have that motivation to get started is just to recall why you're doing this practice in the first place. What is the big vision that you're working towards? So if you haven't seen it already, check out my video on that here. And the other thing that is a real help is making it an easy thing to do to get started. Get over the challenge of seeing it potentially sometimes as, oh, this practice is such a huge thing. So if you can promise yourself, kind of going back to what we said earlier about the short time span, that actually there's just one little thing that you need to do, then that makes it much easier for you to get started than if you're thinking, oh, I've got to do this huge long practice session. And of course, you are always free at the end to keep going. So that's, that's one thing. Set yourself small goals, small bits of practice to do, and that will make it much more likely that you get started in the first place. And the second thing is to make that into a bigger thing, give yourself the chance to practice in relatively small chunks with breaks in between. And what this means is that when you're thinking, oh, I've got to practice now, you're not looking at, say, a block of a whole hour and you know you've got to focus for that. Even if you're planning to do you know, a reasonable chunk altogether, you're looking at maybe five minutes and a break or 10 minutes and a break, whatever it is, repeated. And that can seem like a much less daunting prospect than, okay, I've got to focus down and do a full hour or whatever, whatever your long practice might be. And finally, give yourself a reward that you're going to get at the end of the practice session. And for me, a great way to do this is to plan to finish the practice session by playing something that you really enjoy, something fun. So that way, once you've done the hard work, as it were, there is something, some reward waiting for you. And you can go even further. You can have rewards outside the practice itself. So anything that you enjoy, you know, maybe a cup of coffee, snack that you like, something like that, you get to have that once the practice is done. And this can be another great way to help you get started because there is something clearly reward-like at the end for you to keep that motivation going. And finally, there are those times when the practice just isn't going right. We've all been there. Things where you feel like you should be able to do this and it's, it's just not coming out okay. You're making mistakes. It's really easy to get frustrated and this can quickly turn into a downward spiral and things just get worse and worse and worse and the whole practice session falls apart. Well, let's see how we can stop that happening. And the first thing you want to do is just calm down and don't panic. It's really easy to think that once things start going downhill, that's it. And you can mentally check out and just let them go away. But first of all, just know that it doesn't have to be that way. So if you notice that feeling happening, just take a breath, accept that things haven't gone perfectly so far, but know that, that you're in control, you can turn them around. Um, one of the best ways to do this is to set yourself really small goals. So this is not exactly what we were talking about earlier as having really short things that you're practicing on, but it's about having something very manageable and definite and achievable that you know if you focus, if you give your full attention to the practice, you are capable of doing it. So it's tiny steps. You're not looking to do something really challenging. Another thing you can do to get things working if they're looking like they might fall off track is, is what we talked about earlier about taking these mini breaks. Just give yourself a little bit of time, couple of minutes 
to relax and clear your mind and take tension out of the muscles. Come back to it again. Often you'll find this will really help. First of all, it will break you out of that feeling that you're in a downward spiral. And secondly, that, that relaxing the muscles, easing the tension, that can, that can really help things. Another good thing to go for is if you're finding it a challenging day, then focus on reviewing core repertoire that you've got already rather than learning something new and very unfamiliar. So if you're finding it a little bit difficult, go back to the familiar stuff and polish that up and, and really work on those details there of something that you know well, rather than when you're finding things difficult, making the work you're doing difficult too. And a similar thing, not about the material, but about the tempo is to work at really slow tempos. Now, I'm a massive fan of really slow practice anyway, so I think hopefully you should be doing it at any time. But again, if you're finding the practice challenging, take the tempo way down to a point where it's really easy. You're not just talking about going at, this is as fast as I'm able to go today. You're talking about going at a speed that is way slower than you are capable of playing it, whatever the day. And that's going to mean that you can definitely do what you're aiming to do, but it's also a fantastically useful way to practice anyway. And there's a lot more to say about what you get out of playing at slow tempos and how to do this. But what you're really looking for here is to emphasize beauty and accuracy. And these are things that can sometimes get left behind when we're really trying to play things up to speed. So if you take the tempo way down to a time where you can totally do it without any problems, it frees you up to, to focus on this beauty and accuracy, which are hugely important things. And finally, what you want to do is just be kind to yourself. Accept that everyone has good days and bad days. It's not always going to be a perfect practice day. So this is totally normal. It's not something to get worried about. And use some of the tips I've, I've just given you to, to get most out of your practice, but don't feel that it's a failure in any way or this is, this is unusual. This is just part of life and learning to get through it and make the most of it is, is a great lesson to have. So give some of those tips a try and see which ones work best for you. And I'd love to hear more about how you get on with it. If you'd like to know more about how to put in effective practice sessions consistently, regardless of good days and bad days, then check out my video on how I did two hours practice a day for two years next.